Debbie McGiggins to give us some words from Women for Independence. Thank you very much, Colin. I'm doing my usual thing. I've hundreds of bits of paper and no hands left, so I'll do my best to cope. This weekend, I've been out with Women for Independence. We're campaigning in communities all around Scotland. We've over, from a stand and start a little over two years ago, we now have over 40 local groups and, um, and more groups being sprung up all over the Yes movement and all over Scotland. And we are out there this weekend campaigning for a fairer deal for women. Because the truth is, women have not had a fair deal for women. And one of the things that the polls have shown is, which we knew right away at the beginning of this campaign, um, right the way back when Yes Scotland was, was launched, was that women would take longer to make their minds up how to vote. And that by talking to them, being out in the doorsteps as I have this morning, and as many of you have been over the last few months, we know that they want to vote yes. But, and it's the but which I want to try and address. Because the but tends to boil down to concerns about whether we can be an independent country. Can we afford it? Would all that upheaval be worth it? And if you're a woman with a but, ask yourself this. Do you feel you've had a fair deal from Westminster? Is your life as good as it could be? Could your family be better off if things were different? I don't think women have had a fair deal from Westminster. Women who live in Leith, women who live all over Edinburgh, who live all over Scotland from all types of backgrounds. We've had local authorities, Labour-led local authorities, punishments and nurses by refusing to pay them a decent wage and decent terms and conditions. And we've also had Labour-led councils still spending millions in legal fees to pay, defending equal pay claims for women but fortunately we've got our very own Women for Independence here, Carol Fox, who's on to them and is making them pay um, what women are, are due, even though over a hundred of them. Yeah, and it does get a round of applause. Even though over a hundred of them have died waiting for their equal pay claim to be settled. Only this week the Scottish Government brought out research that showed that the pay gap between men and women is getting worse. Now, on average, women earn nearly 18% less than men. In the 21st century, that's a scandal. <coughs> Absolute disgrace. I've also seen how, um, and I know that in, in councils all around Scotland as well, in Labour-led councils, we've seen them implement policies that actually positively harm women and their children. The refusal, for example, to implement the government's preschool meals policy, and they're still dragging their heels on that. They're also dragging their heels on implementing the free childcare and early learning places. Labour believes that you should vote no and settle for only a little more. More free childcare, better pay. It's all good, but it's not good enough. I don't want pay gaps for women. I want the equal pay promised to women 40 years ago to become a reality. I want free childcare as a right, as an acknowledgement that investing in childcare is not only an economic benefit, but it's good for children, good for their parents, and good for society. I'm tired of waiting for the UK to make good on its promises for women. Things are worse now for women than they've ever before in my lifetime. Three quarters of Westminster's near 15 billion of austerity cuts have hammered women and children's incomes. We are paying the high price. Women are paying the highest price for bankers' folly and to shore up an economic system that doesn't even see fit to reward them fairly. It's not just younger women, older women too, who are being hurt. They face the whammy now of reaching retirement older, still with compromised state pensions thanks to the wee stamp national insurance issue and smaller private pension pots because they dare to take time off work to raise their children. They are experiencing not just fuel poverty in an energy rich country, but now also food poverty in a state which squanders billions on weapons of mass destruction. I want women in Scotland to have better, a fairer deal. 
I want to look forward to better and fairer in my old age, which is hurtling rapidly towards me. And I want better for my sons and the women they take into their families and make their own lives with. We can have a fair and better deal for women, but only if we vote yes. We can have a written constitution which enshrines equality for women for all time. In a few simple sentences, we can change the culture of 300 years, ensuring that future generations of women benefit. We can have a living wage and a better standard of living that goes with it. We can have better equality laws with teeth to ensure that women cannot be treated differently from men. We can have free childcare for all children under five, making work pay for young mothers. And we can maintain free university education so more young women from deprived communities in particular get to go to university and improve their life chances based on their ability to learn and not on their parents' capacity to pay. How can we afford all this? Well, Colin's already told you. We will be a rich country, even on the very first day of independence, richer than we currently are in the UK. But it's also about having the political will to change things. The Better Together campaign made much of the promise to cut corporation tax in the Scotland's Future White Paper, but they are silent on the progressive tax measures, all of which would benefit women, ending the married couples allowance, raising personal tax allowance, and closing the loophole that allows big corporates and multinationals to get away with paying no tax. I'm not so naive to believe that independence of itself will change anything for women. We've been fighting for years, for decades and for generations for change. But voting yes gives us the chance, the opportunity, one opportunity of change, of creating an equal society for women, for us all. And who do I trust to deliver this change? I trust you, all of you. All of us, we are the people who can deliver change for women in Scotland. I want to finish by quoting a woman who's inspired me over my lifetime and who's done a lot for the women of Leith and for the community of Leith in general over her lifetime as well. Margaret MacDonald, in one of her last ever interviews, summed it all up better than I ever could with a sentiment that I have held dear actually throughout this campaign and I'm sure you can too. This is our time, our time of reckoning. We have to take it and if we don't take it, we are consigning our children to much, much less. Certainly narrower horizons, lower aspirations. Consigning our children to being small, when we should be giving them a much bigger world. I don't want any child in Scotland to be small. I want them all to have a bigger world. And I know that you, as women, and as men, and as a community of belief, want the same for Scotland's children to vote yes. <laughs>